with your kids. Hola, Niha, Kunichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Moni Muli Wanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos, hi, my name is Jedley, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, and iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We're so delighted and honored that you're joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Thank you so very, very much. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Lori Orlinsky. She's here to celebrate balloons for Tiger. Before we invite you into the studio, we want to invite you to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. When you go there, we really encourage you to check out our Certified Great Read Wall of Fame. What's our Certified Great Read program? Well, we have a panel of parents, educators, and kids. And if they be- believe a book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a Certified Great Read and becomes part of our Certified Great Read Wall of Fame. Why? Why am I mentioning that right now? Well, our subject today, Balloons for Tiger by Lori Orlinsky, is our latest certified great read. Our panel just loves this book. It gave the book five stars. I had the honor of reading the book before it was published, and and, uh, Lori asked me to to contribute a a quote for the back of the book, and I was happy to do so. And, And I said, Balloons for Tiger is a delightful rhyming book that is filled with hope. A wonderful story that can help families have reassuring conversations after the loss of a beloved pet. It's so difficult talking with our kids about the subject. And t- Balloons for Tiger is a really great uh, resource for families uh, to, to have those conversations. So we really congratulate Lori. And we really want you, again, to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Check out that certified great read wall of fame if you are looking for a fantastic book to add to your family library, that is the place to go. Readingwithyourkids.com and click on that Certified Great Read Wall of Fame button. Joining us right now from the beautiful city of Chicago, she is returning to the show to celebrate her brand new picture book. It is a Certified Great Read and it comes out today. Please welcome to the show the author of Balloons for Tiger, Lori Olinsky. Lori, how are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me again. I'm so excited to have you on. You may remember Lori was on the show to celebrate uh, uh, it, being small is not so bad after all. And then the wonderful book about the tooth fairy and your daughter was on the show. And we are, are so happy that you're a part of our Reading With Your Kids family. I am so thrilled to be a part of it. Yeah. So tell us about this brand new book, Balloons for Tiger. I am so excited about this book. This is another really personal book to me. About three years ago, our cat was acting strange, and we took her to the vet, and we found out right there on the spot that, unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to her that night because she was in liver failure. And my kids were about uh, four and two at the time, and they didn't understand anything about This was the first time they ever experienced death in any form. And so it was really, it was a, it was a hard experience for us. And so I decided let's do a balloon release and it would be a nice tangible way to celebrate the life of Tiger, who was our cat. And so the kids wrote notes on the balloons and they really enjoyed that. And then I found them asking every day where the balloons are. And instead of just saying, I don't know, they probably popped. I would make up stories about the balloons. I would say, oh, they're definitely in Rome now. They're probably, you know, flying over. They're flying over. They saw the cow jump over the moon. They saw astronauts. And I would make up all these stories. And then I thought, hey, this would be a great book because when I was actually searching for a book to read them about pet loss, I couldn't find one that didn't deal with religion. Mm -hmm. We wanted to stay away from the religious aspect. And so 
that's how Balloons for Tiger is born. And so Balloons for Tiger is, is literally, it starts out being a true story about the girls releasing the balloons. And then it's the journey that the balloons take. And it's got a really great lesson at the end. And the lesson is that, you know, you're, no matter if a loved one is near or far, they're always going to be in our hearts. And so at the very end of the book, the balloons end up having all this fun and they get to Tiger and Tiger sends them a gift. She sends a rainbow to show that she loves them too. And so I just, I love the book because again, it is so personal to my kids and I felt like it was something that was missing in the marketplace. Yeah. There, there are, we, we've ha- have had some authors on that, that uh, have written books about, um, about loss uh, but they, a lot of them do have to, uh, you know, revolve around uh, faith and religious traditions. And, uh, you know, we, we talk about books needing to be mirrors, uh, windows, and sliding glass doors. And for that family that's out there that does not have a faith tradition or uh, wants to approach, approach uh, subjects on a secular basis, uh, they need books, too, that, that can help support the lessons that they're trying to share with kids. You're right. And I just wasn't ready to have that faith discussion. And personally, like, I wasn't comfortable. I was so afraid I would say the wrong thing. So this way, I thought they could also help tell the story. And that's exactly what they did. You know, I think my uh, little daughter said, well, what what happens if they get tangled up in the power line? And I'm like, oh, I was surprised she knew the word power line. And I said, well, Santa would just scoop them up on his sleigh. And so we, you know, they really, their ideas contributed to the book. We talked a lot about what are things that fly and who could maybe see this. And my dad was flying, um, you know, he was going on a business trip and he called the girls and said, I saw the balloons. And so we incorporated that in. That's so cool. You know, I think one of the things that, you know, that you experience and, and that I'm hearing is that conversation that you had with your girls, that ongoing conversation that probably went on for days or weeks or months, that's what really helps us get through these these hard times. And, and that's why we launched the Reading With Your Kids podcast is – to just encourage families to use books as that, that launch pad to have those conversations with our kids. Conversations, uh, and I know I've seen you with both of your girls. Uh, they're, they're beautiful, and your relationship is beautiful. And uh, so I know that when your girls are the same age as my kids, you're still going to be having those conversations. And they all began when they were babies on your lap listening to you read them stories. You're right, and I always say – To them, you know, I don't want to be the parent that says we need to sit down and talk about this really tough topic because, first of all, it gets them on the defense and they're like they're feeling uncomfortable and they're maybe not going to listen as much. But when you just read a story that has a meaning that initially gives you that launch pad into the discussion, it's just such a perfect way to, to say to the kids and say to any kids what would you do if you were in this person's shoes and what are the decisions that they made that you could make? And so I think it's really great for reading comprehension and just, it fosters a great relationship between parents and kids because they don't feel like they're being lectured or in this uncomfortable situation. Yeah. I, you know, you're absolutely right. Those, uh, uh, sit down, we got to have a conversation. Conversations are really horrible. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> They're really hard, and they don't they don't accomplish a whole lot. No, they don't. And I think just even doing assemblies in front of children and working with kids in libraries and stores, kids get shy and embarrassed sometimes when you do ask them those comprehension questions about tough topics. And so I think they have to listen first, let it resonate with them, and then understand. Yeah. Now, you came to children's being a children's author late, you had a very successful career in uh, public relations and marketing. Remind us what it was that inspired you to become a children's author. So I've always wanted to write a children's book. It's been on my bucket list for years and years. And in fact, I was in my parents' basement over Thanksgiving going through a box of my stuff. And I saw like construction paper cutouts with glues where I would write my own books and I would always try to write a book and I would always get stuck um, as an adult. And so the, the subject matter didn't come to me until it was something that I dealt with firsthand. 
Um, my daughter Haley is now eight, but went, wow, that makes me feel old too. <laughs> um, when she was three, she came home from school crying and it turns out that her teachers had hung a growth chart in the classroom and they had a, a tape marker to measure where every child sat. And so she saw that all her friends were at the top in the middle of the growth chart and her name was all the way at the bottom with no other names in sight. And we had a long discussion about the benefits of being short and the benefits of being you and unique. And I finally just gave and I said, let me look on Amazon to try and find a book about it. And that was when the light bulb went off because there was no book about short kids. And so I ended up writing being small isn't so bad after all in 2019. And it not only helped my daughter and helped other kids feel comfortable about the skin that they're in, but it gave me the confidence to say, I can write another book and I can mm -hmm. write another. And I really love lesson based books. And I also write in rhyme because I tend to write for that zero to eight year old audience or the three to eight year old audience. And I love how rhyming keeps them engaged and how they know what to anticipate next. It helps with sound recognition. And so I really like to write in rhyme and, and also my kids can help me. Mm -hmm. um, we always say, what rhymes with this? What rhymes with that? And they feel like they're a part of the book. You, you know, one of the things that, that I loved, and I, I mentioned that I've had a chance to, to meet Lori and her kids and, and her husband and see them all interact together. You do, as a family, you, you're a very involved family. You do lots of stuff together. And I absolutely need to, to hit on uh, the fact that, that Haley got your family involved in something pretty amazing uh, over the past year. Um, can you talk a little bit about Haley's bracelets and uh, what, what, what grew from a little cute idea into something ginormous? <laughs> sure. And as I mentioned, so Haley, because she was the shortest one in her class, she was picked on and she was bullied at an early age. And the kids would call her shorty and peanut and munchkin. And it, it made her feel really uncomfortable. And so because of what she went through, she's very, very empathetic. And she's the, always the first child to say, how can I help and what can I do to make you feel better? And so uh, we were watching the news one day last March 2020, right around the time of the pandemic. And she overheard that doctors and nurses were running out of masks um, to treat coronavirus patients. And so she ran upstairs and I thought she was going to go upstairs just to kind of like sit with it and, and, and cry or maybe have a feeling. And she ran downstairs five minutes later with a friendship bracelet. And she had been making these for a couple weeks. She had learned to make them on FaceTime with her friend. And she said, I want to sell these. And I said, that's a great idea. Grandma and grandpa will probably buy one. But right now it's, you know, pandemic. People are out of their jobs. And she's like, no, no, no. I want to sell these and give all the money to the hospital, the hospital that I was born at, the one that helped me when I was in the NICU. And that's Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago. And I said, you know what? That's a beautiful idea. Um, and I, she said, I wanted, to, I wanted to have a goal of $200. And I told her, okay, it's a really great goal, but you might not hit it. Just, you know, we'll try our best. And she had sold Girl Scout cookies a month prior on Facebook and, and got, she ended up selling the most boxes in her troop. So she said, mom, just make a video, put it on Facebook and let's see how it does. And within six hours, she made $1,500. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband and I, our mouths were hanging open because it wasn't just our family and our close friends. She was getting donations from, she was getting 20, 30 shares on my videos. And we got contacted by the news and it just spiraled out of control from there. And, you know, she's made almost $50,000. Wow. And it has been such a whirlwind. She's seen a lot of celebrities wear her bracelets the mayor of Chicago wore her bracelets. And so that kind of kicked it off in Chicago. And she's done a lot of national media. She's been on Good Morning America and the Drew Barrymore show. And the coolest thing, I think, personally, she uh, was invited to have her bracelets in the Grammy swag bag back in March. And so she saw a lot of celebrities wearing her bracelets. That's amazing. 
just, you know, when you think about $50,000 was raised by this giant of a person who is only a seven and eight years old. Wow, that's incredible. And when you think about it, each bracelet is only $3. Yes. So she and her friends, so she ended up involving a lot of girls in this. Actually, some boys as well. Um, we had people that know us and people from all over the country say, my child makes these bracelets. Can we make some and mail them out? Can we make some and send them to you? So it became a really a community service project. And she would be on Zoom and Google Meets once or twice a week training new batches of kids. And so it became a project that many people got behind. So I, I want to say Haley and her team made about 12, 13,000 bracelets. Wow. Wow. That's that's amazing. It's so inspiring, you know, to th to think that this, um, when, when, you, when you think about it, this this came about because some kids teased her when when she was young, and she learned that empathy and uh, you, you know uh, through through those conversations that you had, she didn't turn that experience into anger or sadness. She didn't let anybody um, make her feel bad or make her feel less than. You know, the conversations that you had with her helped her feel greater than, you know, that she could uh, accomplish anything. And boy, oh boy, what an accomplishment. $50,000. It's been amazing. And she's got this positive can-do attitude. And it's funny, over the summer, we were uh, at a restaurant and we were talking about this and, and people next to us overheard and they said, wait, is this the girl that we saw in the news? <laughs> and it was so funny, you know, for her to be recognized. And, you know, it also just, this was a time when the world was really at odds with each other. You know, there was the social justice, there was the political stuff, there was the, you know, people's opinion, mask versus no mask. And it was also a time when we were panicking you know, we were stockpiling on toilet paper. So first and foremost, I think it brought people together. No matter what you believed in, everyone always got behind, you know, one little girl with a common, a beautiful cause. And secondly, we didn't want our kids to see us panicking. And so at the end of the day, we wanted Haley to be able to have the conversation with her kids one day and say, I helped out during this time. And so she certainly can. And Haley's little sister, Ellie, she eventually learned how to make bracelets, but she started out sorting the colors and helping us put the stamps on the envelopes. And so it was definitely a family process. And it's been amazing to watch this grow and, and to know that she made a difference. That's, that's, that's incredible. At, at any time, you can be honest, it's just me and you talking here. Um, at, at any time, did you turn to your husband and think, what did we get ourselves in for this bracelets all over the house? Uh, the times that I turned to my husband was four o'clock in the morning when I was making bracelets as well. And my carpal tunnel was flaring up and my fingers were burning because there were days, uh, for example, she was on nightly news with Lester Holt. I had to put an auto response on my email that said, if this is regarding bracelets, here are the directions because Gmail shut down my email because I got so much coming in. So there were some days that we considered like maybe shutting it down and we ended up going from letting Haley to have people customize their bracelets to then you get what you get. And then we turned it from 10 bracelets to two bracelets per household just because she's in second grade. So we wanted to manage her time. But yes, there were definitely times when I was doing this in the middle of the night being like, what did I get myself into? Uh. <laughs> Haley and her bra bracelets broke Google and Gmail. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I I'm wondering, you know, um, are, are, is, is it, has this experience, is it going to inspire a, a children's book? We've been talking about that. Um, there potentially, potentially, I, I, we all have a full plate right now, but Haley is, has seen how my books have made a difference, especially the books inspired by the kids. And so she's really interested in, in doing something. And of course, if we did something, it would be a give back. It would be a charitable project mm -hmm. where the money went to the hospital because the hospital is such a big, important part of our lives. 
as I mentioned, they cared for Haley when she was in the NICU and they've been a really great partner and they've been keeping Haley updated every step of the way. She, you know, not only did the bracelets, the sales end up bringing masks and PPE inside the hospitals, but they got so much money from this that they took it outside the hospitals to lower income communities. It went towards COVID research and even getting uh, people vaccinated. That's that's incredible. What a beautiful, beautiful story. And what a beautiful story Balloons for Tiger is. Um, I, and, it, and again, I, I'm, I'm really happy that, that we're able to talk about this, the, the bracelet project, that Haley's bracelet project, because I know that that started, the seeds for that started again when you guys were sitting on the couch together as a as a family and, and talking to Haley about the fact that uh, your, your opinion matters. What do you think is going on in this story? And uh, wow, what a great imagination. And, uh, and all those conversations that you had, what a, what a beautiful thing. And I know that family sitting down reading uh, balloons for tiger can have that same effect uh, for a family. Do you ever think about that? Do you ever think about the fact that, wow, these books that I'm writing, Families are going to be cuddled up together all around the world for years and years to come. What what does that that thought make you feel? I never thought about that until I experienced having the discussions with kids in schools and libraries and having them raise their hands and tell me that the book impacted them on a much deeper level than I thought. I thought being small would just help kids that are taller or average size have a different perspective. But kids are raising their hands and telling me their differences. One child told me that they were different because they had a heart transplant and that made them feel special. And so um, it gives me goosebumps all over and it, it takes me back to my childhood, you know, thinking about when my parents would read to me as a kid and how important it was. And I'm just so uh, blessed to be inspiring the next generation of readers and hopefully authors and Reading is just so important, especially nowadays with schools, the uncertainty, you know, being remote, being hybrid. Kids aren't getting that special reading time with their teachers that they're used to. And so reading is even more important to do, whether it's at home with your parents or through an app. Um, Reading has so many benefits, as you know, and I want, you know, kids to be kids to not look at reading as a chore, but as a privilege. Yeah. And, well, it really is, and uh, as as we as we've said so many times, reading is 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 liberating. It just gives kids so many opportunities. It's like a key that can open up their futures. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of keys, you don't need a key to visit Lori's <laughs> website, but you do need to know the address. What's the address where folks can find out more about about your books? It's Lori Orlinsky, author.com, and I have many free resources for parents and kids. I have coloring pages that you can download for all of my books, and I love it when people connect with me on social media and share some of those photos. Um, I'm always happy to reshare them, and my social handles on Facebook and Instagram are at Lori Orlinsky Author. I just realized I'm too old for Twitter. <laughs> They and don't, don't even get me started on TikTok. I didn't even know, understand it. <laughs> well, and oh, also before we go, I know you're also providing services for authors. So just real quick, if there's an author, and we have lots of authors listening to the show, there's an author out there and they're looking for some help letting the world know about their, their great books. You have a, a, an extensive background in marketing, and now you're helping authors market their books. Where can folks learn more about that? Yeah, so I have teamed up with uh, a fellow mascot author, award-winning, best-selling author, Allison Bork of the Alley Cat series, and she and I have founded a company called Forward Publicity, and we help authors of all genres extend the shelf life of their books through different services like award submissions, review submissions, book tours, podcasts, etc., um, our website is forward, F-O-R-E-W-O-R-D, publicity.com. 
Awesome. We've had a great time speaking to the author of Balloons for Tiger. It's just released today, and it is a Reading With Your Kids certified great read. And we've been speaking with the author, Lori Orlinski. Hey, Lori, thanks so much for being part of the show. Thank you for having me, and I hope to come on many, many more times when I write my next 100 books. <laughs> Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. My Protecting the Planet With Your Kids co-host, Alexia Brown, will be back for the next chapter and that exciting mini-series. Our guest would be Evelyn Bookless. Evelyn is a fantastic guest. You don't want to miss it. It's really, really a lot of fun. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast, Protecting the Planet With Your Kids series. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we want to thank our guest three times. Reading with your kids certified great read author, Alori Orlinski. Be sure to check out Balloons for Tiger. It debuted today. Check it out. I also want to thank my team, Alejandra Doherty, Fatima Khan, Alexia Brown. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking through in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.